Praise God, praise God. This is part two of the consummation. I'm going to read Daniel 9, 27. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week. He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. We know that there will be a peace covenant that will be made with Israel. And I'm not sure at the time of when that covenant is. It don't matter. When it comes, it comes. But I've heard that President Trump has a peace covenant for Israel and the Palestinians. And there are some that think that will begin this week. And at the end of this week, is the consummation, the coming of the Lord, the rapture. And after that, it'll be, it's determined to be poured upon the desolate. In other words, the vials of wrath. So that's what the consummation is all about and why it's so important to us. Faith and hope in God. We really need to put our faith and hope in God. If our hope was seen now, there'd be no reason for hope. But our hope is in the future and our faith is in God to get to our future. First Peter 1 and 12, Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know, that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as the lamb, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who was verily foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you, whom by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. A lot of people understand that our faith and hope might be in God, but they don't understand that we need to live like that. Like we have faith and we have something to hope for. But look what it says. The Holy Ghost was sent down from heaven to lead us and guide us into all truth. Yes. And for that reason, the angels desired to look into it. Because they were never given the Holy Ghost. They never can quite see what we see. Because we see by faith and hope. They just see and understand and comprehend things that are before them. We comprehend the future of things. And the hope that we have in our hearts. And the faith that we have in God. Because there's a communication there with us and our Lord. And he said, gird up the loins of your mind. 
be sober and hope to the end. For the grace is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And at the end, we still need his grace. And it's brought at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's our consummation. That's the end of the thing, this battle that we fight. If you read in Matthew 25, first verses 1 through 10, you'll find a parable about ten virgins. Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. Five of them had the faith and had the hope to the end, so they put all in their vessels in case their lamps burn out. Five of them were foolish. They didn't care if they had the victory or not. They come to church to have a good service, but they didn't bring no church with them. They didn't carry no church home with them. They could not last or endure. They didn't have the will to make it and endure unto the end. So when the cry at midnight was given out, prepare for the coming of the bridegroom, they realized there's no fire in them. There's no light in their lamp. And they looked at the other five wise and said, you've got some fire and you've got some oil in your lamp. Give us of your oil. And they said, no, we can't give you our oil. If we do, we might not have enough. But go to town and buy some. There was a separation there. Five were separated to go out and find them some oil. The other five were trimmed and ready and bright burning for the Lord when he came. They were prepared. Just seems like it's like the parable of the tares. Tares were sown among the wheat. Tares weren't actually the wheat. They didn't have the fire of the Lord in them. And so they separated out before the coming of the Lord. The five foolish were separated out before the coming of the Lord. The Lord said, come enter in to the marriage supper. The five wise entered in. The five foolish were still out trying to buy all. When they come back, the Lord said, I don't know you. I don't know you. I guess they got a false experience. They had something that imitated God. They didn't have real God. They didn't have the grace that it took to get in the door. See, this is the faith and hope that is in God. That's why he said, He that has called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. We got to carry the fuel in us. We got to carry the fire in us. We got to carry the load so that we can endure. We have our faith and hope in God. You can tell people that have the glory of the Lord around them. It shines on them. Shines through them. There are people that go to church. On Monday when you go to the job, you can't tell there's nothing saved about them. Boy, when they were in church, they shouting it up. Oh, I got an experience with God, but they get on the job and start cussing, carrying on. Mean-spirited. No love. You say good morning, they about bite your head off. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. But they go to church. They might even pay their tithes. Might even go to the choir. Might even preach. But somehow they didn't have the oil with them. They didn't have enough to make it. We want to make it. Have our faith and hope in God. Not in man. Don't let a man's preaching carry you throughout your relationship with God. Let God's relationship with you give you that hope and faith and help you along the way. To every man, he's given a measure of faith. You let that faith grow in you and he'll bring you through some things. But now it's a costly thing. He said, But hold thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as the manner of some is. 
But when you come out of that trial, he said, you're going to shine forth as gold, tried in the fire. You know, it teaches us in Romans, uh, the fifth chapter, I think it is, that we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh our, our uh, faith and our hope. Tribulation works patience. Patience experience. Experience hope. And hope makes us not ashamed because God has given us the Holy Ghost to carry us. Yeah. We'll ride on the wings of love. God's wings of love carry us. And He'll sail you through anything. I'm here alive today to testify. He'll carry you through hard things. I've been through hard things. My faith and my hope is in God. Amen. That's the end of this second segment. I'll play another song. You want me to play one or you want to sing one, Brother Johnny? Go ahead and play one. I think we about wore you out today, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, Amen. You'll be all right. I'll be all right. I thought you would be. Yes, Let me try to turn this.